So if you've watched the first strike groups, you might know what's up, yeah, what's up and coming, but both teams electing go double hear you with Saipans. One going for Nice now, the other going for the sister ship. And that is interesting. Um, Sharnhorse. Destroyers. Both of them going for Akatsuki's. I wonder what I'm missing here. Why the Akatsuki's? So we've got tournament domination, and I'm going to ram into our fellow here, and then we can get a look at what's going on. Now, because we've increased it from four to five players, uh, we wanted to go away from standard battle, where it was basically defend your own base, and change into a system of... Oh, there we go. Change it to a system of, hey, let's let's do like a tournament domination with multiple capture points to encourage people to move around. And the reason it's not carriers only is so that we don't want it to devolve into like a secondaries battle. So in that sense uh, of carrier secondary battles, that's why we added a battleship. But because we've added capture points and, and tournament domination, we wanted to include the, include the destroyers. Uh, Anyway, we'll come back to the kind of the reasons behind, but first open engagements, fighters are seeing each other, we see kind of like, the key thing here is to like watch the minimap, okay? And we see that the fighter line kind of spreads out. Now there are three carriers, which means to be one, two, three, four, five, six fighters on each side, which there are. And we see the tier nines, these are the Saipan fighters, and the tier sevens, these will be the Hiryu fighters. And they're creating just sort of a line at the moment. Well, I presumably both teams are thinking about edging towards their kind of capture points, Alpha and Bravo, but it's to be seen whether or not the lollies go towards Charlie. Because they have a very heavy fighter prince, Charlie, but if they go for Charlie, then surely what stops the Kana team from grabbing Alpha and then Bravo and then just start accumulating and have a points lead because in this instance it's not like standard battle where you're playing for points or, or capturing the enemy base usually it comes down to can you kill off or overwhelm one particular uh, you know enemy ship and then that puts the, the, the team that's lost the ship at a huge disadvantage okay so we finally see the first ships and sure enough the lollies are staying tight as a group and moving towards Charlie, and then the advantage of staying in this group of four here is you all have overlapping anti-air, but let me assure you, controlling all your planes and trying to manipulate your ship is very taxing. And I love the color scheme we've gone with here. Matching camouflages. That's cool. But where's the destroyer for the bots team or the bots and lollies team? So first capture point goes well, to the closer cap for Kana. So they're going to start accumulating a few more points. Teams are kind of lining up, looking. I think they're just kind of like doing kind of like a fighter standoff at the moment. They don't necessarily want to engage. They don't feel they have to engage. So we'll see how this kind of plays out. We see the bomber group is pushing up to Bravo from Lollies. And the other ones from Kana are just waiting, looking for an opportunity. Both teams playing it pretty passive to begin with. Thing is, when an actual fighter duel typically starts, it can get really messy because you can't control all the plane waves. You're reliant on oh, first plane blood here, maybe. Saipan fighters going after enemy Saipan torpedo bombers. Oh, I tell you what, I need to turn on. Give me two seconds here. Animate small objects. There we go. Oh, we can actually see your planes. So that's a strafe, and that's an exit strafe, and that's a follow strafe on an exit strafe. That's how he clipped the two planes. But now he himself has been double clicked, and then there's another strafe going in. And chaos now ensues! <laughs> strafes in all directions. Uh, heavy fighter strafing the, of the Saipan breaks him up. I think the red team here, and we'll just keep it that simple, is getting air control. It's a couple of messy strafes and control every Oh, exit strafe by the Saipan because it can, dominating the bombers. And this is the issue. The red team has temporary fire control, so can it maximize that? Can it use it to advantage? And see, the, the, they've lost some of their bombers, but we have some of the Hiryu uh, planes going towards really clustered uh, group of five. Now, while this is going on, so we've got some lone Hiryu torpedo bombers coming in for the group at Charlie. Uh... But the anti-air is long. You can't fly around the anti-air bubble. I mean, he's inside the 6 or 7.2. The Sharnhorse would be 7.2. Yeah, 
that didn't go anywhere. He needs to kind of... You need to, like, when you're going to attack such a high uh, amount of AA, either you splash damage these AA guns on all the team, then kind of mitigate the damage, because we see a huge bombing force, but it's in 7.2 kilometers, and these are tier 6, and, and the tier 9s are lesser so, but the AA of, like, Nizanas and Charizards is still pretty darn impressive. And we could, oh wow, we missed the hear you damage on Clearly. These are hosts. So he's down to half health. We didn't see how that triggered. And I don't know if that was a bomb attack or whether he got hit by the battleship, but he is being slightly harassed. That was a dive bomber strike. And we see well, the fighters are now up, but they, they see blood in the water and they're going to try. This has been the red team of the lollies possibly trying bomb Clearly. And Clearly's now trying to get to the smoke so he can stay with the team and progress round and go for Bravo, but he's still exposed. And oh! Torpedo bombers incoming. No defensive fires. It's all anti air. <clears throat> He's going to take at least one. Now, this is, is the damage control party up? Is he going to have enough health? Oh, the battleship takes him down to 5k. If he hits this torp, he dies. All right. So, the thing is, this is going to have repercussions later in the game. Uh, because they they can brute force being the enemy team, the red team. Oh, wow. And, uh, okay. Torps run out. That's fair enough. So, clearly might want to hide behind the island and not necessarily move. But that thing comes with its own risks because, you, you know, you're isolated. You still want to stay together as a team. Capture point-wise... Green team from Canada is still doing fine. But eventually, because um, the game doesn't go forever, you can start running out of, um, you know, kind of planes, because there is a plane reserve in this system. Blind fire in the smoke, trying to hit, or can they see clearly? He's backing off, nope. So Alpha is now also now captured by Canada, so they're 2 to 1 advantage in terms of cap points. However, <clears throat> I'd have to say that the fighter control from lollies has been slightly better in that they are all up and available the one more or less the first engagement or at least that what it looks like from the opening eye in the sky so if they can brute force this again oh then again ericsson not moving not behind the island he gets spotted by planes and takes a big hit from the enemy battleship nice now now the question is they're relatively spread out the group of five here of canna uh, sorry, of, of, of uh, bots and lollies. So the question is, do they regroup? Do they push for the Bravo Alpha Cap? Or do they just try and get a, a ship kill? Because because we've moved away from uh, domination uh, standard into domination mode, just killing a ship sometimes isn't necessarily enough. If you're down on capture points, a team can afford to take a ship loss. That like, Kana could theoretically afford to take... Oof! The loss of their Hiryu who's on 1,749 health. Now this is the issue where, do you fly around the flanks, how do you harass him, do you stay next to him and give him AA, is the Canna destroyer because they have the capture points, is he going to pop a smoke and keep him safe? Thing is, smoke is good against things like dive bombers, it can't necessarily know where a thing is unless you visually remember where the guy was, but torpedoes, they stream through smoke and you know, here you isn't a small shit. So I think the teams are jostling again. I mean, they see the fire plane, we can see that the Sharn horse was actually beginning to poke out, so what we might find is that the red team uh, pushes out as a, as a group. The risk of that is that the Nizanar from Kana can uh, try and take some shots, but he's not like the Sharn horse, he's not going to splash HE. Uh... Oh, dive bomber on the rear line. This could just be a scouting dive bomber. Oh, here's the hear you. Sharn horse, have you got a shot? And you know what? You're talking ooh, 19 kilometers, just not quite comfortable to make the hit. I think he's kind of going on the back line, so he's staying with the destroyer to safe, but the dive bomber is keeping him spotted. This is the hero. Oh, he takes the shot from the shark first. I just said it was close. All right, all right. Oh, I, I don't know if, if he needed, I mean, the thing is, did, did the carrier need to move this way? Can he not have just beached himself this way, or even gone longitudinally this way, and then that way, the only way torps go round is if they drop from behind, then you don't have to worry about dive bombers coming in the front, but you have all your collective AA, you can have your fighters on the front line to protect, you've got the double cap advantage, and with the knives now kind of on the peak shooting and anything that comes across, maybe that was a better idea, but... Kana, as we said, has double cap. They still have the advantage, but the enemy Sharnhorst is now pushing up 
solo possibly, or at least maybe the destroyer's behind him but is not seen. And has a smoke trail allowing the crew. Oh, there you go. So the destroyer is with the Sharnhorst. But sight control here for Kana isn't the greatest. They are mostly playing on their own friendly lines. However, when the Sharnhorst pushes out with the Akatsuki, he, they are going to be away from the AA of their carriers. And possibly they can be struck. So here comes Saipan Torpedo Bomber dodging perhaps a lock-on, that's a strafe, uh, which misses the dive bombers. The torp drop on the Katsuki doesn't necessarily work because he sees it coming and he dodges. These are kind of desperate hits, but the Shardos has taken a couple of hits. Is this torp going to activate? It does not. He turns in. It's a dud torp. Other bombers are just basically being thrown into anti-air, thrown into enemy fighters. You can't last that long. The Katsuki goes around the corner, can start chipping away at the enemy hear you. We now have a nice now Sharnhorst kind of duel. The bots lollies, you know, Sharnhorst, he is down on about half health, and this game can totally flip on its head if the enemy BB dies, because as soon as the enemy battleship goes down, your own battleship and destroyer can be far more boisterous at chasing down the you know enemy carriers. <clears throat> So here you kind of moving to get out of position, going slightly around the corner. He doesn't have to worry about any surface ships on this particular side, but the thing is the Kana team is slightly being sp uh, dissipated and spread out. But the Alpha capture point, and this is the most important thing with the destroyer, has been captured by the uh, Lolly's team. And I'm not sure the Canada team can do anything about this. They, they'll only have so many strike planes left over. You, at tier 7, ex with the exception of the Saipan, you give it two, two and a half waves of attack planes in the hangar. So if they've already done two strikes that have cost them everything, they get maybe one more attack? I think the Nice now and the Katsuki of Kana has to take on the Sharnhorst and the Akatsuki of the enemy team, and they need to win in a very important engagement. If they can get the kills and they get the points, they can take the capture point back and this game can flip back on its head even though it feels like the Lolly's carriers are have the upper hand here. All right, here we go. Very important BB duel going on. <laughs> and the girlfriend's coffee machine in the background. <laughs> here we go. First kind of chops. Amazing damage! Secondaries from the Sharnhorst at 7.2. Well, that'll be AFT then, I'm guessing. And torpedoes from the... Uh, coming in all directions, but the important thing here is that there is no fighter cover, so these are like strafe attacks. And the Sharnhorst makes his turn, and here comes the strafe now. <laughs> friend, friend, friendly fighters get strafed. <laughs> well, that's the, that's the chaos that is. Um... Turn off stream lamps for the time being. That is the chaos that is strike groups, in that, you know, not everyone can do everything. Oh, but hello! Katsuki's caught snapping, he's not moving! That's gonna be at least two torps! Oh! Down to 2k! He's behind the island, thinking he's possibly safe, making a play, but the sea. Ah, we see you! He, he's too far away from his own eyes now for AA support. Getting dive bombed now, the other CVs are miles away. Oh wow, the Saipan has also been bullied as well, we didn't catch that. And the Akatsuki is down to 200. Oh, he's bleeding out. He's bleeding out. He's going to drop. Uh, and I don't see I don't see how they can come back now. That's the Akatsuki Torps on the Nice now. He dodges, but the enemy shard, he is low. It's still not over, over, over. It's possible. Oh, I don't have the cap timers on. The, the time till victory. Well, that's annoying. We'll have to do that uh, between the next rounds. So we'll just repatch the client. thing is he needs to push and he needs to try and get rid of the Sharnhorst or kill of the Akatsuki because he sees them right now because it's been spotted. Oh, and over here, uh, they kind of redirected their fire. Katsuki Sharnhorst is going after the Nice now. Oh, the hero's going to burn out as well. Just dive bombs and dots. He's going to go down. I think the Kana team was too spread out. And there goes Saipan and that's that's game. And that's also their critical reserve of planes, so that's why that's very important, because the Saipan has uh, effectively four and a half waves per plane wave. So, we are playing best of ones in the rounds, so we're gonna say GG, I'm gonna just patch the client to get the countdown timers 